Occupational therapy can be one of the great ideas of 20th century medicine. Throughout this presentation, we will introduce the author of the Slagle Lecture, Mary Riley, and go over the key points, the historical context, and the professional context of when this lecture was written. Mary Riley was born in Boston, Massachusetts in 1960. She attended Boston School of Occupational Therapy, now associated with Tufts University, and received her certification in 1940. In the 50s, she earned her bachelor's from the University of Southern California, and soon after, a PhD in education from UCLA. She would become the head of USC's graduate program and went on to direct over 90s master's theses in occupational therapy, which at the time was the terminal research degree for our profession. Dr. Riley became internationally renowned during the 1960s and 70s for developing a frame of reference for occupational behavior that described the biopsychosocial nature of man through human occupations of work, play, and self-care. Dr. Riley, what is the main focus of your Slagle lecture? The main focus of my lecture is on the critical appraisal of the essential worth of occupational therapy. I look at the technique of criticism that will be explored throughout, as well as the value of OT that exists in a controversial site. What hypothesis was occupational therapy founded on? In the lecture, I mentioned that the hypothesis that occupational therapy was founded on was that man, through the use of his hands as they are energized by mind and will, can influence the state of his own health. This optimistic vote of confidence also gives to human nature. What does this hypothesis imply? This hypothesis implies that there is a reservoir of sensitivity and skill in the hands of man, which can be tapped for his health. It also implies that the rich adaptability and durability of the central nervous system can be influenced by experiences. And lastly, once again, Man, through the use of his hands, can creatively deploy his thinking, feelings, and purposes to make himself at home in the world and make the world his home. What does this hypothesis require? Well, because this hypothesis is about health, it requires that the knowledge obtained from practice must be made available for the guidance of the physicians, and that it be made applicable to a wide range of medical problems. What is your message for the profession of occupational therapy? My message for the profession of occupational therapy is that we are more than active therapy. We do more than just fill time for arts and crafts. We acknowledge the wants and needs of our clients and fulfill them to the maximum ability that we are able. Occupations are a human necessity and it has been proven time and time that individuals have difficulty just idling by. They need to be able to participate in what is meaningful to them and we will provide them with the skills and knowledge to do so to the best of their ability. What is your message for the consumer of occupational therapy? The takeaway message for consumers of occupational therapy is that the occupational therapy serves man's vital need for occupation, as well as their central nervous system demands for rich and varied stimuli through solving life's problems. Our needs are an indispensable part of human nature and imperatively demand satisfaction. What is your message for society? Our society requires a much sharper focus on the needs throughout occupational therapy treatment. Without a more constructed way of thinking and illustrating what is being done throughout the treatment, society will write off this profession unless we adapt and highlight the things we can do. As I mentioned in my lecture, I have little trust that we can continue to exist as an arts and crafts group, which serves muscle dysfunction, or as an activity group, which serves the emotionally disabled. What are the main themes and takeaway points from this lecture that you would like the occupational therapy students at East Falls to know? One of the main themes of this lecture is that man influences his own health. Through psychological and physiological connection, and occupational therapy needs to find its role in society and continually prove its value. The main question that I asked throughout the lecture that I would like everyone to consider is occupational therapy a sufficiently vital and unique service for medicine to support and society to reward? I believe that it is indeed a vital and unique service 
and it can positively impact the consumers and the society in many ways. Occupational therapy requires the mind to look at the history of man's achievements throughout civilization, and it gives us a mandate to apply this knowledge and even more help to influence the state of his own health. How do these main themes relate to the philosophy of occupational therapy? My lecture reflects on the occupational therapy profession within the historical context and in turn looks toward the future. The philosophy of the occupational therapy profession inherently requires the occupational therapist to continually acknowledge history so they may best understand their client in their social, cultural, and historical context. My lecture also makes the point that the occupations are fundamental to achieving health and well-being. It aims to show that the role of OT is valuable because occupations are valuable in our lives. This also lines up with our philosophical basis of OT. The 1960s were one of the most tumultuous and divisive decades in world history. It was an era that would set a tone for the following decades. The 60s were marked by the civil rights movement, the Vietnam War and anti-war protests, the JFK assassination, Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech, the Cuban Missile Crisis, Woodstock, the Beatles, Man Landing on the Moon, and the Emerging Generation Gap. What were the major historical, political, or social events that influenced the lecture? There have been many historical, political, and societal events that influenced my lecture. Social scientists have said that the world in which we live is in a state of indigestion from too much change. During this time, no one has yet to absorb the disorganization brought on by depression, two wars, and an ongoing massive technological revolution. I've had to evaluate OT as a profession would move forward from these difficult times. How did these events impact OT practice and spark your thoughts or your motivations? During the first couple of decades of occupational therapy's existence, medicine offered occupational therapy a tranquil and supportive setting. However, the last several decades have changed that experience and has put excessive stress for expansion upon a profession whose role had barely been defined. The occupational theory practice was organized into specialty fields by demands of World War II. Clinicians had also been systemized into team behavior by the pressure of rehabilitation. The constant change in life affected OT as there was a mounting sense of confusion and voicing a need for direction as a result of the constant change we had seen the last few years. While the world is changing rapidly, most institutions have centralized their action for controlling change through planning groups, variously called the task force, master plan committee, or the toll definition study. We are currently involved in three changing controlling studies, professional curriculum, and clinical practice, the functions of organizations, and the future development of profession. There was a lot of legislation, updated definitions, and other events that impacted the profession of occupational therapy throughout the 1960s. The salary range during this time was $4,000 to $10,000. Throughout this decade, occupational therapists began to more deeply define their role as therapists. They became more competent and knowledgeable in different treatment techniques for physical disabilities. They became more focused on the social and psychological aspects of treatment on top of the need for quality health services. During the 60s, occupational therapy became specialized when new fields of concentration were introduced that included pediatrics, developmental disabilities, and mental health. Within this decade, the use of prosthetics and splints became more common. There was an increase of involvement of work-related activities and occupational therapists reference normal growth and developmental patterns and application with their patients. What were the major events and issues within the profession at the time of the lecture? Prior to starting the lecture, I had gone through the Great Depression, World War II, and the Vietnam War. After these events, we needed to prove the value of occupational therapy. This need had become relevant due to the rapidly changing world. There was need for more education and centralized education accreditation system. This was brought on by the history of the AOTA accreditation. 
How are these major events and issues reflected in your message? One important message that I tried to convey to my readers was that change is inevitable. There was emphasis placed on the knowledge that came post-Depression era 1930s. In the country seeking economic recovery, many individuals were seeking help. This time period revealed a link between the psychological well-being and physiological well-being. Occupational therapy is evolving with the times and reflecting on the past to help us in the present. Our society demands a sharper focus on the individual needs and more specifications within the field. Occupational therapy is rooted not only in human productivity, but also creativity. And it focuses on enrichment of sensory and motor experience to maintain treatment plans that are more specific, including these ideas and advanced study of theory, in education programs and beyond is very important for the future. Mary Riley knew that occupational therapy was a great idea, and she knew that by asking her central question, is OT a sufficiently vital and unique service for medicine to support and society to reward, she would get answers, as well as more questions. She recognized the anxiety about an OT's value, and therefore she further outlined the need to define the field. The lecture explores various ways to define occupational therapy through exploration of her hypothesis that OT is vital for mankind because man, through the use of his hands, can influence the state of his own health. She spoke with a great emphasis on the historical past, knowing that historical and contextual perspective is vital to move forward. This idea was previously deemed impactful post many of the traumatic world events previously impacting the profession, such as the Great Depression, World War II, the Vietnam War, and the mental hygiene movement at large. Some of her lasting impacts uh, regarding the lecture are a continued emphasis and exploration on man's need to be productive. She recognized the connection between pleasure and productivity and outlined it in this lecture. That is something we still think about in the OT field today and always will. Recognize how did the lecture impact the profession's role in meeting society's current and future occupational needs? Occupational therapy is a unique profession that enables and encourages people to influence the state of their own health. It also recognizes man's drive for occupation and shaping occupational therapy services around the individual's needs. My lecture explores various ways to define occupational therapy through exploration of the hypothesis that OT is vital for mankind because man, through the use of his hands, can influence the state of his own health. The idea was previously deemed impactful post many of the traumatic world events previously impacting the profession, such as the Great Depression, World War II, Vietnam War, and the mental hygiene movement. What impact did you hope to have? My hopes for this lecture is that everyone understands that OT is valuable to both medicine and to society. Also, that we recognize that occupational therapy is a profession that requires reflection on historical events, individual and collective achievements, and that reflection on the past can impact the future of the profession. I also would like to emphasize the exploration on man's need to be productive. What impacts would a therapist or OT student identify today? Occupational therapists, as well as occupational therapy students, need to continually reevaluate the professional identity. If occupational therapy as a discipline wishes to exist, those in practice and working in theory, including occupational science, need to define their role at large and continually clarify the vital need of those they serve. On this slide and the next slide are the references we use to create this presentation. Shortly, we will send a link in the Zoom chat box to a shared Google Doc where we can go over questions together as a class about the lecture.